um, the feedback that I've had is the, because in, in one sense, as a practitioner, you pull back. So you're not influencing, you're not creating interference for that person because the person doesn't need any more interference, right? You, you become just another voice, which is telling them something else. So by the practitioner stepping back and just doing the framework, it allows the person's own light bulbs to come on. And this was something that practitioners haven't expected. They haven't expected to be able to ignite someone's innate capacity to understand something and understand the impact or the value of putting in place solutions and how much meaning that could create in their lives. So it's that realization really, it's when, when they see the patient seeing the possibilities, suddenly their work becomes worthwhile. What you're doing is you're creating a space for that person where there's no interference, where they can actually look. It's a very safe space. They can have a look at their life as it is and the sorrow within that life. And they can start to imagine what they would like, even if it's a small change. And then they start to think about what would it take for me just to get there. And when they see that that's doable or even achievable, that incremental step, then they see the possibilities. And then what could happen as a consequence of them realizing those possibilities? But you, it, it, it's the person's, it's the person's journey. It's, it's, it's their imagination that gets switched on. And it's that that drives the journey, not what you're telling them or what you're encouraging them to think. It has to be within the context of their own life and only they know what's gonna work for them. It's magic, absolute magic. I had one person who was suffering from a range of symptoms and she couldn't get a diagnosis. And she was seeing multiple practitioners and she was getting worse. So everything that they tried was actually not taking her in the right direction. And she was stuck in her life circumstances, in her capacity to work, in her capacity to afford her day-to-day -day living. When she went, when she started looking at it, she said to me, you, you helped me look at it through a different lens to see what I could do. And it, made, it helped her put the brakes on, the medicine, to say, hang on a minute. This is taking me in the wrong direction. I'm not going to get mad about this. I'm just going to halt it. Let's just wait until I can see my way through. Let's just try and find somebody who is going to listen to me and understand where I'm coming from and work with me. And she was able to take all the medications out that weren't working for her and to move forward and to find someone, I think it was a physiotherapist that she found who had the same problems as her, right? So she needed to be able to use her limbs in a certain way to exercise them. She had fibromyalgia, but that was as a consequence of something else, which was why the fibromyalgia treatment wasn't working. And she was able to be at peace with pulling back from work rather than that self-criticism and the self-blame and the self-judgment. And when that happened, it sort of created a flow where the relationship that she was in started to blossom all about removing friction it's all about increasing flow it's all about being content with what you can achieve and enjoying the fruits of that labor patients need to be able to communicate with their practitioner 
and the practitioner with the patient. And you have to have a common language for that. From the patient's perspective, what they're able to look at are what reference points am I measuring a treatment against? All right, so a treatment would need to work. So the patient is really clear about what it is that they want fixing or which symptom, the pain of which symptoms they want to see reduce. But they also have an idea of where they would like to end up in terms of treatment dependency. So, and this is a, a language that the medical practitioner speaks as well, because it's a risk mitigation language. So it's which risks do I need to mitigate? So when a patient is talking to a practitioner around choices of treatment, they'll be able to talk about which symptoms will this treatment help? And will, by going on this treatment, where will I end up? Will I be able to come off it? Or what else do I need to do in order to be able to reduce my risks? It opens up the field then for other things that a patient may be thinking of doing where they can bring their specialist or their doctor in the loop saying, I'm doing this as well as, as doing this treatment. Will you monitor me? And of course, the big thing is that if a patient has as one of their reference points where they don't want to end up, this fits so neatly with where the medical practitioner is focused because the reason we get medications or we're given drugs is to, it is to stop us to also slow the progress or the process of ending up with an acute event, say a heart attack or, you know, in diabetes, limb amputation. So treatments are really done to, to, as a risk mitigation. So if a patient can also factor that in, and, and let the um, specialist know that they're on the same page, then the specialist or the doctor will know that that patient isn't driving blind. And I think that's the biggest problem is when the practitioner feels this patient's just read something on the internet, they're just focusing on the risks of the treatment. They're not looking at what it could do for them. And I don't want to work with this person but it changes the landscape completely. So it's just those key reference points. Very simple, very, very simple. It's massive, massive, because when you're in that space as a patient, there's very few things that you need to ask. And when you're just tic-tacking or when you're just talking around those reference points, the specialist can actually answer you really concisely. So you get this wonderful flow and you get this collaboration and both feel satisfied because you get a strategy, you get an agreement. Or patient may say, thank you very much. I need to go away and think about this. Is that okay with you? And they may say, yeah, that's fine, but you don't have much time or think about it, but come back in three months, we'll, we'll check. So you get some, you know, parameters as well. So you just never know what comes out of the mix. But the thing is you can go into that appointment clear headed, not with, oh, I've got this bunch of questions to ask and I'm really frightened in case I miss one out or in case I don't understand the answer. It's very simple, very clear. 